a specialist in liver disease. I used to run a dedicated hepatitis C treatment clinic in the university. Some patients would travel 200, 250 miles each way to Albuquerque to see me. You know, he's getting his diuretic therapy, he's getting the... I found it extraordinarily frustrating that some of these rural patients would come to me at too late a stage. I always had that nagging thought that if I had just been able to treat them earlier, I would have been able to prevent this problem. If you're in a remote area, the specialists that I need and that Ashley needs, we don't have those specialists. We'd be traveling once a month out of town quite a ways. Squeeze nice and hard for me. As a rural physician, I'm not exposed to the constant didactics and grand rounds and M&Ms that a physician in an educational institution is getting. No, you sound good. So we came up with this echo model with the idea that if I could get rural clinicians who would be willing to be mentored by me, then permanent addition of capacity will occur in these rural areas. We use technology like video conferencing. So I'm recommending end of treatment viral load and six month post. We started with hepatitis C and then we realized that patients with substance abuse disorders were not getting good health care in rural New Mexico because there were no experts in that area. We had experts in Albuquerque, so we said we would echo them. One thing led to another. After that, we started a diabetes program. Now, we have echo projects in 19 separate areas. Every day, we have a different echo project going on. She's a physician assistant, and she's actually also interested in the pain echo. The primary purpose in Project Echo is not to treat individual patients. The primary purpose is to build expertise. Go ahead, Angela. Thank you, Dr. Banker. Um, patient L.O. is a 39-year-old patient. Uh, Over the last 20 years, I recognize what are we going to do with this massive number of people that have to be seen by us. And uh, fortunately, through the ECHO program, I can finally access these people. So why don't you just hold the hydrochlorothiazide? Okay. Let's stay on everything. A local ophthalmologist started sending me a whole bunch of patients with possible Sjogren's syndrome. And I'm sitting there on the computer going, okay, I know what Sjogren's is, but how do you work it up and what do you do? And it just sort of started from there. But I did do a full autoimmune workup on her, um, which was all negative, including... During the sessions, I'm able to make suggestions and ask questions or clarifications, even if it's not my own case. It's a giant mind center of collaboration. She has some pretty significant contractures in her right hand. Video interface allows us to build what we call a community of practice. That is, there is collegiality, the same as you experience when you're doing rounds in a hospital. Dr. Bankers, would you consider compression stockings, thinking that this could be an element of post-lobitic syndrome? Well stated, Madhu. What do you think, Naomi? Well, she doesn't have edema per yeah. se, but um, it is best practices all over the state to these sites. And mind you, these providers are really talking like they're rheumatologists. They know all the lingo, they know all the therapies, and it's very gratifying. The primary idea in Project ECHO is something which we call a force multiplier. Every one patient that's presented, many more patients benefit because the expertise of the clinician increases, and this enhances quality of care. How are the knees doing? Knees are good. Are good. Okay, mm -hmm. good. The more I know about rheumatology, the more I recognize it in the clinical setting. And the more people I'm diagnosing, this also opened up an entirely new field to me. You know, I'm now getting referrals from other physicians at the hospital. We started Project ECHO in New Mexico just for rural areas and prisons. But then our urban sites wanted to join us. And so we said, yes, do it. University of Chicago has Project ECHO going on for treating hypertension in African Americans. In the University of Washington, they now have 20 sites. The care that these doctors provide is as good as we provide in the university. It's as safe and it's as effective. We've been able to demonstrate conclusively that the model works. 